Well, welcome back to the shop and today we are doing I'm gonna try and do see it's all going wrong already <laughs> fucking do the music <laughs> my name is Matt welcome back to the shop and today we're going to be talking about uh, flat-sided carbs now um, I have some flat-sided carbs. I've chopped some flat-sided car uh, flat carb in half. We've got a regular constant velocity carb. We've got just loads and loads of carbs, and we're going to get to them, I absolutely promise. So I'm not going to go through the entire thing of carbs because that is them videos, basically. But um, there are basically what we call normal carbs, which have round slides, and then we have flat-sided carbs, which have, well, flat sides. What is the difference? You know, um, the flat-sided carbs are more expensive. You see them on, uh, you know, expensive uh, championship-beating bikes like KTM's and stuff like this. Um, you know, on your general 125s and your commuters and stuff, even the ones that are still sold with carbs nowadays, which is very, very few, but even just, say, like 10 years ago, um, you would get just your bog-standard round carbs, and then when you get your expensive stuff, you get flat-sided ones. So what is the difference? Why is, there's many differences between these carbs, little iterations and little differences, and these are all upgrades basically. But what is the difference between the flat sided bit and the round sided bit? So in your carb, you have your Venturi. We'll go through Venturi's and um, all the effects like the pitter effect and stuff like that, head pressure, blah, blah, blah. But you can either have a uh, round slide, so we'll actually we'll do all three next to each other. Obviously this is not how they sit in a carb, this is just to show you the difference. So you can have, uh, no you can't, I'm fucking jumping ahead already. <laughs> so you can have a round slide carb, which is kind of like this, usually it chews into the exterior wall. You can have a round carb with fl flat bits on it, like guides like this, or you can just have flat carbs like this. What is the difference? Um, it is easier to bore a hole straight through there like so. That is the cheapest option. But it, what it means is it means that your slide, which your slide is really what controls um, the mass airflow rate through your actual carb. So basically it's a wall. When you have your throttle closed, and we'll go, we'll talk about the back cuts and stuff when we talk about um, carbs, and I've got the examples in front of me. But basically this is a wall, this is when your throttle is closed, there's a little gap at the bottom because obviously when you're on idle you don't want to choke the engine of air completely. And that gap there denotes basically how you are going to run um, in respect to air. Um, there's other circuits and stuff, there's bypass circuits and stuff like your pilot jet circuit and all the rest of it. There. You can see on the front of here we have a round surface here, this is what's basically facing the incoming air. Then you get onto your bit more expensive, the bit more upgrades to it, where we have this kind of round slide with a kind of backing to it. And the way they get around this is basically it's a casting insert. The ER5 has these, and then there's basically just a slot in here to allow this slide to slide up and down. And then you have your flat sided carbs, same kind of thing. There's usually an insert, or it's a very good casting process, usually die casting. Um, or investment casting where they can basically really con um, uh, the tolerances are really um, tight basically they have to have tight tolerances uh, and controllable tolerances they have to have excellent control so basically this is cheap you know and on this end you get into the expensive side of things but what does this mean people you'll know from people who've maybe ridden or if you don't flat sided carbs generally have a better more a, a betterer far better a, <laughs> a crisper uh, throttle response when you crack the throttle she jumps in now the problem with this in a sense is that this is um these carbs not just because of this kind of like guillotine slide thing going on these carbs are more uh you have to be more accurate when you tune them they kind of a bit of a problem uh, the other carbs are more forgiving but it's not so much because of the slide it's because 
it's a general purpose carb that will work in all conditions. When you have race carbs and stuff or more expensive carbs for competition and stuff like that, they're not worried about you trying to start on a fucking December morning at six o'clock to get to work. You know, you've got better conditions and so on and so on. But what does this mean? Why, why have you got more, you know, why have you got a more crisp throttle response? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of these and just look at this. So when you have a round, we'll do a better picture, fuck it. When you have a round throttle body, uh, slide, sorry, not a throttle body. It is a kind of throttle body like this. The air, when she's coming in, can flow through the carb when you're on wide open throttle. But when you shut that throttle, or partly shut that throttle, these regions here, these angular regions here, they make the air do all sorts of turbulence and all sorts of shite, where basically this air that comes straight in kind of just butts against it and it either turns back on itself or it goes into the corners or what have you. The thing is, when you all of a sudden open your throttle, you have kind of like almost like three bands of air in a sense. It creates a lot of turbulence, which is good for fuel mixing, but you have this turbulent section here and then this other section here that's feeding that turbulence so when you crack open that gate you imagine it's like a gate with water you open it up and the water floods through now what you would like is all the air to evenly just you know go into the carb the problem is is your fuel jet here from your fuel bowl is in the center which means that all this is messy and it's just chaotic and horrible and your engine basically misses a beat in a sense the air's far too turbulent and because of um the the smoothness in a sense of the air flowing through your cab that's how it meters the correct amount of fuel because it's all turbulent and haphazard what happens is you get a very turbulent mix which seems like a good idea but it means that some of it is rich some of it is lean and it doesn't mix properly so when you get on the throttle and you get them ignition events it's nah, it's so so. It's only when you've done a couple of revs, the because um, you've got to remember these engines are spinning like crazy. You know, 15, 16 times a second. As soon as it goes through a few cycles, then you get the proper flow, the mass airflow rate. It all basically smooths out to a degree. So instead of being all horrible like this, it basically just starts to basically flow better. And when it flows better, the fuel flows through your jets better, betterer even more better and you basically get a better mixture so when you have that combustion event it's um well it's just a, a better it's just a better mixture so you get a better combustion uh, which it basically equals more power so that means that's what we mean by throttle response you go like this you demand power from the engine and the engine goes <coughs> what <coughs> clears its throat and then it goes for it with a flat sided carb um, you can see where I'm going with this. With a flat sided carb, what you have is you have this wall. And the same thing happens. Everything comes in, it bumps in, and it does all this turbulent shit. But it's more even across the carb. And when you pull open that gate, even the air that's still hitting the top of the slide, it just deflects under. And you get a lot smoother um, airflow into the engine. So it's like you've already done that coughing and spluttering or that. Um, that radius of that actual slide hasn't caused this excessive turbulence. So when you crack open the throttle, it's a lot smoother just as on the get-go. It's not perfect, and obviously you do want some kind of turbulence because turbulence causes mixtures, um, which means you get a homogeneous mixture. Basically, that just means it's the same all the way through. You don't have hot spots, you know, like where it's too rich and too lean. Um, but it's basically this spluttering of the engine of <laughs> I need to sort my fucking life out and then all of a sudden um, it sorts its life out with a, a circular kind of slide with a flat side you open it up and it's just like I said just imagine you've got a corridor and you open the gate and then all this water can flow as one wave you know it basically you just lifted the barrier and it all just flows through it's not as turbulent as mad um, but the reason why they sell the round ones is because it's far easier far cheaper to make a round hole because basically you just make a casting with most of the hole missing so just say if we're looking at this as a casting you'll have a casting where it's a bit rough around the edges 
it's not going to basically accept this uh, perfectly round um, slide that needs to go in there then all they need to do is there's your centre there they come in with a boring bar and basically just open this up like so so now you've got a smooth finish and you can drop your slide in the problem is with um, the slide carbs is that you can have this and then you have to make either this pocket where this insert goes into or you just have it directly sliding into the casting but this surface you know it's very 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 hard these are blind holes as well you've got to remember that these are blind holes you know trying to broach that or something like that would be ridiculously expensive basically because your tools have to be crisp it's also a blind broach which is a massive pain in the ass it either means you do it cnc and you have a broach just come in and just nibble away and it takes fucking forever or what you can do is you can use a casting process like investment casting die casting stuff like that so basically what you do is when you cast this um you'll have an insert or something like that inside your mold and the metal basically just sits against these sides so it basically can define it means you've got a lot tighter tolerances these are not clearances we're talking about these are tolerances basically you want this slide here to be um i don't know three let's just say 3.65 millimeters plus or minus 50 microns which is fuck all um you can't do that with just regular sand casting stuff like that it's just you're not going to get that tolerance whatsoever um but with investment casting which is like lost wax and stuff like that or if you use um die casting you can actually basically define this and get this that tight and then basically all you have to do is the actual slide that goes in because that's exterior because the slides like this you can just mill this and machine this whichever way you want to basically fit this uh, either straight out of the casting or you basically just do a couple of trial fits a lot of the times like i say with the er5 it's carb is a bit of both it's a slide with a circular section in it like that um it's just a way of kind of doing a bit of both where basically they just have to make sure this tolerance is quite good and the insert but the inserts are made exterior so the inserts and we'll see this with the r5 carb you can see that the um carb body is sand casted and then you can see from the um ah! uh, the slide section you can see that it's a different type of aluminium you can see and that's been die cast you can see that that's a separate thing that's been die cast um, so instead of die casting the entire thing which is really quite expensive because the molds are really complicated and i mean fucking complicated uh how all the ejection pins all the coolant everything like that how the actual um mating sections lock together and basically so there's no like horrible um flashing on it stuff like that you know and these were these molds wear out pretty quickly um so it's quite expensive so what they'll do is they'll die cast this insert and the slide but not the whole carb for slide carbs a lot of the time the entire carb is die cast um, which is very expensive but it means they can just plonk these slides in or plonk in inserts and slides it's a bit of both um but it, that's where the the cost comes from because it's quite expensive and this is why they don't come as standard for a lot of just normal commuter bikes and 125s and stuff like that hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit